Hi students, welcome to exercise 35, uh, basically other rational functions. So we've seen a couple of the rational functions, uh, we'll just see some random uh, various uh, other rational functions. Okay, so, sketch a graph f x equals 1 over x squared. Okay, well x squared, okay, by definition, is always positive, because two negatives make a positive, two positives make a positive. Therefore, 1 over x squared will be positive for all values of its graph. All, however, if you divide by 0, so if x is 0, you'll have a vertical asymptote. So there's a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. And if x becomes extremely large, so if x becomes infinity, right, 1 over infinity becomes 0. So y would become 0. Same thing for negative infinity. If x becomes negative infinity, y would also approach 0. Okay, so n we become always positive. I'll insert a point, a couple points. If x equals 1, you have 1 over 1, right? And if x equals negative 1, you also have 1. So this, as x approaches infinity, y goes to 0. This is your horizontal asymptote. So you have your horizontal asymptote here. Okay? And the graph would simply look like this. Okay, so you're going to approach inf 0 at infinity, you're going to approach 0 at negative infinity, and as you approach the vertical asymptote, you're going to positive infinity, because don't forget, both of those are positive. Alright, <coughs> so note the factor of x has a multiplicity of 2, therefore the graph stays positive on both sides of the asymptote. Remember, with the multiplicity of 2, it stays the same value on both sides, whether it's positive or negative, so this is the same idea. Example 2. Sketch the graph of y equals 2, uh, 1 over x squared minus 4. Well, I could factor this to y equals to 1 over x minus 2, x plus 2. Right? This is a difference of squares. So here you're going to have two uh, vertical asymptotes. We're going to have a vertical asymptote at x equals 2 and x equals negative 2. So at x equals negative 2, we have an asymptote, and at x equals 2, we have an asymptote. Okay, so no different than the others. Here, as x becomes very large, this fraction will get very close to zero. Okay, so which means that you're going to have a horizontal asymptote Okay, at y equals zero. Um, and then you can uh, sketch, you could probably find some points, um, some easy points to find. Uh, I'm going to find one from every section. So on this side of the vertical asymptote, one in the middle here, and one on this side. So I'm going to choose... Again, I'm just going to make a small little uh, table of values. So x equals negative 3, x equals 0, and x equals positive 3. Again, one from each side of the vertical asymptotes. So there's three sections here. Okay, so if I plug in x equals negative 3, right? So negative 3, you plug in negative 3, you get 9. 9 minus 4, you get 5. So here for y, you get 1 fifth. Okay, for x equals 0, you're going to get negative a quarter. Okay, so as you can tell, these graphs, um, okay, there's 3 squared minus 4 is 1 fifth. Uh, these graphs can get pretty de detailed, as in, look at all those little fractions. Okay, so let's put those points on our graph. So negative 3, 1 fifth. Okay, so 1 fifth is going to be hard to draw, so maybe I'll go right there. That should be close enough. And at positive 3, 1 fifth, also tough to draw. And at 0, negative a quarter, which is about there. All right. So what happens here is the graph's going to go towards the asymptotes as it approaches them. So here, we're going to go towards the asymptote as we approach, and towards the asymptote as we approach. Same thing over here, we're going to have, whoops, I'll try that again. Okay, again, pretty tough to, to draw. Okay, so we go near the asymptote, near the asymptote, and here you're going to go towards the asymptote, and towards the asymptote. Okay, slightly different graph. Actually, you might have seen a graph like this in grade 11 pre-cal, but uh, generally, you're just looking for asymptotes, right, and a horizontal asymptote, and then you're kind of sketching the graph as needed. All right, here's another graph. So um, notice that we can factor this denominator here, and notice that you have a constant here. This is a vertical uh, translation, which means you're going to move everything up 2, which means now your horizontal asymptote will be now at y equals 2. 
Okay, so let's completely factor this first. So you have 1 over x minus 3 times x minus 3. I'll continue that denominator there. And then plus 2. We could rewrite this as saying y equals to 1 over x minus 3 squared plus 2. Okay, so if we take a good look at this, this is very similar to the first graph we sketched. The first graph we sketched on the first page was 1 over x squared. Okay, so that graph is simply translated 3 to the right and 2 up. Because the only zero here, the only uh, non-permissible value is x equals 3. So we have this vertical asymptote over here. I'm going to bring it down just a tiny bit. Okay. Since this is always positive, because this is always positive, because it's squared, this will be positive and we moved it up 2. So your horizontal asymptote is at 2. Okay, and if you're not sure, you could always plug in values. So I'm going to plug in one value on each side of the vertical asymptote. So at x equals 2 and x equals 4. Okay, so there's probably good values to put in. So if you put in 2 there, you get negative 1 squared, which is 1. 1 over 1 is 1, plus 2 is 3. So you get 3. You're going to get the exact same value if you plug in 4. So you get 3 here, you get 3 there. And you might recognize this graph again, just like the first one. Sorry, I missed that point. Shouldn't have. Okay. So it looks very, very similar to the graph that we sketched on the, f the first page because it's just simply the original graph, uh, 1 over x squared, translated 3 to the right and 2 up. So then we have our graph. All right, and lastly, <laughs> example 4. Sketch the graph of 1 over x squared plus 1. Okay, so note that x squared plus 1 is always positive, so therefore it will never be 0. So notice that there is no vertical asymptote here because the denominator will never be 0. Uh, and a way to find that, let's just take a look, quick look. When is this equal to 0? If you bring the, x, the 1 over, you get x squared equals 1. Well, that's impossible because x squared is always positive. Therefore, this is impossible. It will never equal to 0. All right, and what happens when x becomes very large? Well, when x becomes very, very large, what happens is you get 1 over infinity because infinity squared is still pretty much infinity plus 1, nothing changes. So when x becomes very, very large, y goes to 0, and therefore y equals 0 is the horizontal asymptote. So there is a horizontal asymptote in our case, but there is no vertical. Okay, well, let's find a few points just to get an idea of what's going to happen. So again, I'm going to x, y, so maybe let's go with negative 1, 0, and 1 to start. If I need more, I'll add some. So if I plug in negative 1, you get negative 1 squared, which is 1, plus 1 is 2. So you get 1 half here. At x equals 0, you're going to have 1 divided by 1, which is 1. And you're going to get 1 half for the 1 as well. All right, so let's plot those points. This is 1, this is a half, this is a half. And don't forget, when you approach infinity, you should be getting closer to this asymptote. So the graph that you're going to have here is simply looks like a little hat, I guess. Okay, so you go from all the way left, close to infinity, you're getting up to the maximum value of 1, and then you go back down to going towards 0 at infinity. All right, so that's true for any graph when you have the denominators never equal to 0. It'll look something like this. Okay, so just for the domain and range, the domain, any x value exists. So here, x is all the real numbers. Right? Or you could write uh, from negative infinity, whoops, sorry, from negative infinity to infinity. Okay, for the range, uh, a little bit more complicated. Notice that the value of 0 is not going to be a value you reach. You're going to get closer to 0, but you'll never touch. And you have values all the way to 1. So for the range, you would have y is larger than 0, but smaller or equal to 1. Or if you want to make an interval notation, you would say from 0 to 1 inclusive. All right, guys, hope uh, those graphs kind of made sense. Uh, again, these are just a variety of different rational graphs.